Hello, welcome pen friends. My name is Chris and I'm back with another video to talk about one of my favorite fountain pens. Um, it's one that I started out with right from the beginning, a, a Platinum Preppy. And I still love them and use them all the time. And I think that they're good for people to who have never had a fountain pen that are just interested and might want to want to um, try one or learn or, or get kind of introduced to the hobby the, a fun way so that's what this video will be about it's sort of on entry level and most of you all already know more than more than I do about this so bear with me but uh, this is the platinum preppy and I have here um, a 03 which is a, a fine point um, there's extra fine fine and uh, medium in these that I know of Anyway, um, so here it is right here, and this is the nib right here, and then inside um, you have a cartridge, a cartridge that just pops right in and starts to work for you, and they last quite a bit, that's pretty good capacity there. Um, what I do personally is I refill mine with an ink syringe and little uh, samples of ink. So my friend that I gave the pen to, I told her when she ran out to just let me know I'd, I'd refill it for her. She doesn't have to worry. Um, and we're starting up a pen club here in Corpus Christi, so I kind of wanted my friend to try the pen and see, you know, from a totally brand new perspective, somebody has never written with a fountain pen, what she thinks of it, including any kind of thing that goes wrong. Um, and I know opinions vary on this little pen. Some people love them. Most people love them, I think, or so many that I've heard from. And some, not so much. Um, I will I will say that with mine, I did some nib smoothing with some micro mesh, just a little bit. And it made a big difference. It really did. Um, with this particular pen, with this one, with this black one, I didn't do that. But... Uh, that's an option. That's always an option to uh, smooth the nib, um, to work on that kind of thing. It's not how I started out, but after a while I realized I think I could do that. So that's what I did. Um, I wanted to talk really basic on how to hold the pen just for a minute here. Um, and to do that, we really need to look at the pen that I came into the fountain, ha fountain pen hobby from, which was the Pilot G2. So you you can hold that any way you want. You can just do literally any any rotation of it. But with a fountain pen, you do need to keep that nib up. So you're you're holding it and it, it needs to be kind of like this. Not like this. Not like this. And not upside down. I mean you won't get much ink flow if you do that. And maybe none, but <laughs> in it very little. So you're holding it this way to write with. Let's see if I can let me get it. Okay to write this way more or less and I think my friend already got that going because she already texted me that she was writing so but that's just something if you're brand new starting most of my viewers are not but but uh, I don't want to keep making assumptions like that because it's so interesting you know how we're all just you know on this journey in different uh, different steps to it so let me see what my notes say because I, I always get on here okay this is this is where I got these pens, with a few exceptions. I know I've ordered some from Goulet pens as I have given away and replaced them, but Jet Pens is where I like to order these because they also have the these little refills and other things that my husband wants. So three dollars each. They they are. They come with the, with the pen and the one cartridge. Um, what I love about them, they won't dry out. They're just amazing. Let me let me grab this here. Um, I want you to see inside the cap. The cap has this little plastic inner part that keeps it from drying out. And uh, it's just amazing. You can have these inked up and not worry about them drying out. And with fountain pens, you, you can't do that with most fountain pens. But you can with this. And it's just incredible, um, the fact that they stay nice and ready to use. They're clear demonstrators, being clear that you can see the ink, you can see in. So that's what that's a term that you learn when you come into the fountain pen community is demonstrator. Um, you can use a cartridge to refill it. Um, you know, you can use a new cartridge or you could refill a cartridge with an ink syringe, which is what I do all the time. 
um, you can do what's called eyedropper your pen and I'll show you one of those. Um, I did not prepare this pen. A another pen friend sent me this pen some time back already ready with the um, o-ring and everything put in a little plastic o-ring that looks like this needs to be put in to, to seal it and you need a little bit of silicone grease on the threads inside um, and you know I don't want to overwhelm anybody most most of us are already doing these things and this allows you to fill this whole body of the pen barrel of the pen with ink and so I filled it with uh, hypnotic turquoise Karen dash hypnotic t turquoise and I love it it's going to be really fun to have so much ink not have to refill it for a long time so but that I just wanted to mention that this goes a long ways this goes from just being timid about putting a cartridge in to being all the way up to it being a tinkerer with grease and and uh, you know syringes and 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 o-rings and fun stuff you know <laughs> really fun stuff so I like what I like too about this pen as I said it comes in extra fine fine and medium I just prefer the fine I'm right there with the fine that's my preferred area maybe if I was always using heavy paper I might not mind the medium one so and this pen also it comes in fountain pen like this but it also comes in marker and highlighters so if you go to jet pens and check it out that's where you can get them I'm concerned for my friend because I'm afraid that her daughters are really gonna like the pen so I really want you to know where to go or where to send your daughters for these pens because I just have a feeling there's gonna be problems you know because we talked today about pink and purple and red and all that and yeah they're available in all these colors so <laughs> okay I am so scattered today, but it's so much fun what we're doing here. Um, oh yes, I want to show you one of the main reasons why I love these, love fountain pens and, and love these pens. It's the ink choices. This is my old ink journal. I've just finally filled it up. And this in the front, I just made room to put all these little swatches of these little um, uh, samples that I've gotten. And so rather than go to Walmart and, you know, get a, a G2 and maybe not even be able to find a refill, because that was what I was dealing with right before I came back into fountain pens, you have all these choices. It's good and bad. I mean, sometimes we get carried away, but I just love it. And uh, I didn't plan far ahead when I did this, or I would have sectioned it off a little better. But you have just incredible choice in ink color. So that's something I, I just had to mention. It's just amazing. And then here's where I did write on my my other uh, heavier paper, but I'm going to show you how, how they do on the cheap paper too because that's one of the best things about this. So, um, you know, I think we've covered most of these things. $3 pen, won't dry out, refillable, variety of colors. It is a clear demonstrator. It's fun to look at. It's great on cheap paper. Let me show you. Well, I'm going to finish with this first. Okay, one, one of the things that is a drawback is that this pen can crack. I've only had one do that on me, and it didn't disable the pen. In other words, I can still write with a pen. It has not dried up. It has not affected anything. But I did notice somewhere or another I got a little rough with it, must be, and I had a little little tiny crack in um, the cap area. But, but I didn't... Um, you know, and obviously if I drop it on an asphalt or, you know, cement, I might have a problem. And, and if I step on it, it's going to be a goner. But, you know, we face that with lots of things. And it's good that it's not a really expensive pen. So I did want to quickly talk about, I'm not sure why, but I was, I was going to talk about the pens that I was using when I came into the fountain pen hobby. And also one other choice in um, beginning... Um, fountain pen which is the Pilot Varsity. Let's start with that one. The Pilot Varsity is, is really nice. It's got a medium nib and it's ready to go and doesn't dry up. It's got all of those features. The only thing is it takes a little more skill to go ahead and convert this into something that can be refilled. And if I pursue it, if I got into it, I could but because I do really like the nib. I'm not going to throw it away once it's empty. And this is a very smooth writing instrument. I like it a lot. I just, it's not made for refilling per se. But there are people out there who have done awesome videos on how to do that. 
Okay, this is another pen that I started with when, before I came in. It's the Pentel Energel Liquid Gel Ink, and it has a needle tip. Somewhere on here it says that. Needle tip 0 0.7. I'm just using these up. I'm not going to purchase them again um, because I have much more ink color choices in the fountain pens, and the fountain pens are just as smooth. But this is a, a joyful pen to write with. I still write with it in my journals just to... You know, when, whenever I'm in a hurry or I'm sitting there with the cat and I don't want to be dropping things, I, I'm finishing them up. And, of course, the G2s, the Pilot G2s. Um, I don't like these anymore. I'm, I'm really fussy about these. They seem real scratchy now to me. But I um, I can use them in my Loistrum as, you know, filling in, journaling here and there where there's empty spaces just to use them up. Because I did have quite a few before I came into the fountain pen hobby a year ago. And I don't like to waste things. I, You know, I could give them away, but if they're already open like that. Here's another one. Um, Paper Mate Ink Joy. I, I like these. These are great. I recommended these to my mom, and she's now using them. Very, very smooth. Real smooth writers. And the ink dries really fast. So these are awesome. 0 0.7. But they don't, they're not enough to get me away from my fountain pen hobby. <laughs> not by any means. And then this is another one, but it's not fair because it's a felt tip. Papermate Flare uh, Medium. I love these for my bullet journal. So, and I, I, you know, those I might even purchase again if I needed them. So, so it's hard for me because I've been in the hobby for a year now, a little more than a year, and I've been a pen freak forever. So that's, that's nothing new. But I'm not sure, like... It, you know, handing someone a pen and wondering, did I say everything I should have said? Is is there anything else? And, you know, um, and of course, Jet Pens is not the only place you can get these. You, there's a lot of other places, too. I just prefer for this particular thing because they also sell my other favorite, which is the uh, the Petite One series. And this is a marker one. But, you know, they have these. So if I'm ordering, if I get $25 worth at once, which between my husband and I, he he loves pens too. Um, we can come up with that and get free shipping there and that kind of thing. And I think that prices are good. So um, I think that covers it pretty much. Did I, sh ooh, I don't remember. Did I show you? This is the cheap paper. Really rambling. I think it's time for dinner actually. Um, th these uh, platinum preppies write so well on the really insanely cheap paper. They don't really bleed through. They do a little bit of shadowing, a little tiny bit of bleed through. Nothing that's going to bother me because this is note taking for me. This is uh, uh, always uh, book notes or daily notes or something like that. And I just love it that they'll write in this these really cheap papers. And then again, they stand up. They do well on, on the um, Rhodia and on the uh, nice uh, index cards that I got from Baron and Fig. Uh, so they, they can go anywhere. They're, they they come in with you as a brand new newbie and they go all the way through your life. So if you want them to. And I really love them. Um, I hope I've covered what would be useful. But we do have the comments for questions and things like that too. So if there is anybody who wonders. I definitely think these, these pens are worth $3. They're fun. And I write with them all the time. And I don't mind putting them in my purse and my, my day bag. My briefcase or whatever I'm taking uh, with me when I, I accompany I'm a caregiver and I, if I accompany somebody on appointments I like to go ahead and uh, bring some pens but I'm, I'm not likely to bring I'm not even likely to take my Lamy to a, an appointment because I don't I, I'm sorry but I don't want to lose it and and things can happen <laughs> or I could drop it too and I guess I'm a little bit paranoid on that but um let's do a crystal um we got another crystal to do. It is a sunstone. And it's sparkly and shiny. And it's funny. I had given one away. And my husband asked me for a sunstone. Because he had a moonstone. And I said, oh, I just had one. But I, I gave it. So um, I went and found another one for him. And, of course, I had to get me one. So let's see. Let's get into the Crystal Bible by Judy Hall. And see what it says about it. <clears throat> this is a nice crystal. It's actually a... It has a nice feel when you pick it up. Okay, it says, Attributes. Sunstone is a joyful, light-inspiring stone. It instills good nature and heightens intuition. If life has lost its sweetness, sunstone will restore it and help you nurture yourself. 
clearing all the chakras and bringing in light and energy. This stone allows the real self to shine through happily. Traditionally, it linked to benevolent gods and to luck and good fortune. This is an alchemical stone that brings about a profound connection to light and the, regener and the regenerative power of the sun during meditation and in everyday life. Sunstone is extremely useful for removing hooks from other people. Oh gosh, it goes on and on. So we don't want to read it all. But this is something that you can get online and you can go to like healing crystals or you can just Google and you'd be amazed at what pops up. It's just just really fun to see what pops up about these crystals. Uh, I just like having them around me. Even I usually just buy them by how I feel when I pick them up. I love them and let's see healing sunstone stimulates self-healing powers regulates the autonomic nervous system and harmonizes all the organs wow it treats chronic sore throats and relieves stomach ulcers exceptionally good for seasonal affective disorder Ooh, oh yes i remember that because i do remember sharing one with a friend sunstone lifts any depression no wonder it, it it's a good one for me to hold sunstone can be gridded around the body and relieves cartilage problems oh i'm having problems like that i had the flu and then Kind of settled in my rib area. Awful. And it's probably that costochondritis again. But anyway, there it is. Sunstone. Hope that was helpful for somebody. And I think that's it. I This is like take three. Something went wrong earlier. So I'm glad to have this video done. And if you have any questions, um, because there's doubt, undoubt, you know, I'm sure, things I forgot to mention, then let me know. And uh, I hope you'll enjoy this fun pen yourself. Everybody out there and the people that come to the pen club will will be trying to have some extras of these around for them and and especially anybody who's never tried a fountain pen I think it'll be a nice starting point one of the things I'm considering and I've got a few others too to talk about later so thank you very much for joining me and and have a great day bye for now